Oof. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, it's Sunday. I'm sitting outside on my rocking chair that I got for my birthday. Um, and uh, I, in the mornings, a lot of times, um, love to drink coffee and sit outside on the weekends and just read. You know, I'm a creative, I love to read and read stories about adventure and sometimes crime and whatever. And every once in a while I come across something where I'm like, what in the what, what? Okay. I have to tell you all this story. There was this Florida, I, I can't even coffee talk this morning because I got to just tell you this story because it's so crazy. There was this Florida man who won $30 million in the lottery and he took the $17 million payout. And he was like an illiterate guy and, you know, didn't really have a bunch of people around him that he could trust. And everybody was coming to him with their hand out. They need money from this, they need money for that, whatever. And he was lending, loaning people money and getting money back and loaning people money and not getting money back from all of these people, okay? All of a sudden, he turns up missing. In April, he just turns up missing. And his mother gets letters from him after that. But she knows that her son is illiterate. He can't write. So it triggers something in her like, how is my son writing me these letters when he can't write, right? Of course, mothers know. Then she gets a call from her son who tells her that he's okay. He just needs some time. Um, that he can't take the pressure anymore of being a lottery winner and people in his space. And he just wants to be alone for a while. And she says, okay, baby. And then she calls the police. Yes, his last name is Shakespeare. She calls um, the police and she says, listen, my son's been writing me letters and he's illiterate, he can't write. And now somebody just called me and said they were him and that's not my son. Because I know my son's, I know my son's um, voice. So go in the house child is wearing me out. Um, my kids can ask the same question 500 times. I don't know about your kid, but my kid can ask the same question. So anyway, um, the cops start doing an investigation. Now there are so many people that have borrowed money from this guy and like owe him money that there's like a million different suspects. So the police have to work to eliminate people as they go on. And the investigation takes months because they don't know where he is and whatever. So the police start monitoring prison phone calls from people that knew him to see if they could get anybody who would like give any information. So they get this one guy who knew him on the phone with this woman. And she says, when was the last time you saw Abraham? Maybe you could get Abraham to bail you out of jail. And he's like, I saw him the Thursday before I went to prison. Here's his number. Why don't you call him? So the police find this woman and they ask her about him. And she, of course, says, yes, I called him, but he said he didn't want any part of it. So I just left it alone. Well, the police keep investigating and find out that this woman actually met up with Abraham and promised him that she could help him manage his money. 
because he felt overwhelmed and couldn't manage all these millions of dollars and everybody had their hand out. So she gets him to trust her and that she's going to manage the money. And what she did was she transferred $2 million from his money into her bank account. Then she bought a $1 million house from him for $665,000 and put it in her boyfriend's name. Then this bitch killed him and buried him in the backyard, almost seven feet in the backyard, and put a cement slab patio over the body. When I tell you this chick went through, jumped through all kinds of hoops to pretend this man was still alive and use his money and manage his money and write letters and make phone calls. And I'm telling you what, this isn't a book. This is, you could Google it. His name was Abraham uh, Shakespeare or something. The police finally come in on her and she knows she's going to be arrested. And she tries to say, okay, yes, I stole his money. Okay, yes, I swindled him out of a house. Okay, yes, I buried his body, but I didn't kill him. If you don't shut all the way up, okay, you lying, trifling, Satan-influenced, lost cause of a human being, they broke up the cement in her backyard and they dug and dug and dug. And if they didn't find Abraham's body and she was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. And let me tell you something. Y'all don't want to talk to me about the death penalty because you won't like what I have to say. Because she can't be rehabilitated. You can't be that manipulative. You can't be that much of a predator and prey on somebody who has emotional and intellectual disability. And let me tell you, she almost got away with it. She almost got away with it. And what is the lesson here, folks? Don't buy them damn lottery tickets. Because money is truly the root of all evil. And I know people who have been given much less. Uh, who have killed for much less. But the way she manipulated, the, the extent in which she went. I write movies. I write movies for a living. And she is the kind of villain that takes a writer months to figure out how far someone would go. And I just like said, I got to share this story because I have never the, the likes in which I can't even, I don't even have words. I don't even have words. And the mother, Abraham's mother forgave her. And that is a relationship with Jesus that I aspire to have, which is why I always wear my cross to the side because I am still on my journey with Jesus. I am not in the state of resurrection yet. I am not there because I'm not forgiving a mother nobody who does that to my kid. Nope. No, 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 no. So anyway, now I'm fascinated by true crime. And I'm curious if you're into true crime, Abraham Shakespeare, you could Google it. It is something else. It is something else. And all those people that owed him money now and he's dead, no. The dude that took the million dollars from him, I hope all those people get amoebic dysentery and walk around with chronic diarrhea. So I am curious if there are other true crimes that you recommend that I read about because I'm not into true crime that much because my whole business, I'm always in scripts and screenplays of crimes and death and survival. And I don't really watch a lot of true crime. But please tell me about true crime, the craziest thing you've ever read or ever listened to that I need to know about because I got to get on it. Now I'm now my interest is peaked. I am peaked, y'all. I'm about to sit out here on my porch alone in my Snuggie, ignore my children and read true crime. So let me tell you, 
comment here because I need to read more and I need to know more. And if you want to get your sideways cross, we are back in stock, although we're almost sold out. Stateofstylejewelry.com. I love it. Um, okay, I'm going to go through all your comments now and see what I need to read and what I need to listen to. And if you have links, put them in there because I'll just be clicking on them. Okay, I love you guys so much. Have a great, great day.